Thanks for joining us for Dublin today. I'm Stacy Brooks and here in the studio with me, I have the Cutler family. Now, uh, many of our viewers will already know Melissa. Melissa is so glad, uh, so nice <laughs> to have you guys here in the studio with us. Glad you could be here. I want you to introduce uh, your beautiful family to our viewers. Um, I'm Melissa and this is Matthew and Meredith and Marshall. Now, Melissa, um, as going into our show today, of course, we are focusing on uh, organ donation. Of course, February is the month of love. Of course, Fairview Park Hospital on February 14th really uh, pushes that skin, tissue, and organ donation. So we really want to concentrate on that for our viewers who may not know. Uh, Melissa did undergo a transplant last year, and we're going to get into that in a lot more detail in just a bit. But before we do that, why don't you tell us maybe just a little bit about yourself? Um, well, I'm Melissa. I work for the Lawrence County Board of Education. I've been there for, this is year number 13. It has went by very fast. Um, we are members at Bruton Baptist Church, and um, that's, that's about us. <laughs> Faith, family, and church. We That's, right. So, That's right. That's um, right. And I know you work at the board office. You used to work at the school, so a lot of a lot of parents will remember you. Yes, that. I was. I was at East Lawrence Middle for nine years. Then I went to East Lawrence Primary. I was there for two, and now I'm at the Old West Lawrence High School, and this is going on my second year there as well. And then, of course, your husband, Matthew, um, a familiar face to Dublin as well. <laughs> Matthew, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Matthew. I'm married to the famous Melissa Cutler. Everybody knows Melissa. Some people know me. Most everybody knows her and her a little bit about her story. Um, I'm a firefighter EMT by trade. I've uh, been doing fire and EMS for the last uh, 24, going on 25 years now. Uh, in December of uh, 2016, I took over as fire chief for the city of Dublin. Been with the city for going on 19 years now. Wow. I've heard some great things. I know that um, that you're very family oriented. So I heard some great things um, from the folks over there as well. So uh, so glad to have you. And of course, your children. Meredith, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Meredith and um, I'm a senior at East Lawrence High School and I'm in Beta Club and Team USA. Awesome. So are you excited? You're a senior. So any decisions yet about college or thinking about what you may want to do? Yes. I'm at um, Georgia Military College right now. I'm on my first year and um, do a dual enrollment. And then I'm going to transfer to a college that does PTA program, physical therapist assistant. Wow, that's awesome. That's in high demand too. So that's awesome. It can't go wrong with the medical field. Very noble profession. I'm always partial to that. Have family in the medical field. Okay, and then we have the baby, right? Marshall. The rotten one. <laughs> My name's Marshall. I'm 13 years old. I'm in the seventh grade at East Lawrence Middle School. I play tennis. I like to build models. I'm in Beta Club. I play tennis also, and that's pretty much about me. About you. So you're athletic, and I understand you like things that move, robotics and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. All right, very hands-on. Well, it is so nice to have you guys with us now. Um, our topic for today, for Dublin Today, of course, as I said earlier, uh, it is that time of year when we kind of focus on organ donation. Of course, they uh, encourage you to do, you know, if you haven't already, you want to make sure you let your family wow. know. You can also have it on your driver's license if you're interested in becoming an organ donor. But a lot of times we really don't think about organ donation until someone we know or someone we love or someone in our family has to face that. Now, um, you know, and many of us in the community have personal experiences with it, but I really, uh, Melissa, I'd like for you to tell us a little bit about your story, what um, organ donation means to you, and maybe just take us back to the very beginning on um, when you realize, you know, hey, things just aren't quite right, what happened, and some things, you know, we may even have viewers who are having issues or who, you know, may be facing the same journey yeah. or battle that you are. And I know that that's very important to you. You want to be yeah. an encouragement to others. So I just want to give you some time maybe just to take us back to the beginning of your transplant story. Yeah. Well, we found out in 2003, um, before I had Marshall, um, that I had an autoimmune liver disease. Um, we just done some routine blood work and it came back abnormal. I had no signs, no symptoms, no anything. 
Um, and we ran those results and they came back with high liver functions and we were referred to just like a general doctor here who referred us to a specialist who eventually got us to Emory. Um, and I saw him for a long time. Uh, they caught it early and they really thought that with medicine it would be controlled and I would have no problems. And um, in 2015, everything kind of made a turn for the worse. Um, I started having um, like yellowing in my skin, my eyes, my liver functions were really off the charts, even with medicine. Um, they put me on several different things and you know, nothing seemed to be helping. And so from there, that was when they sent me to Piedmont to be referred there um, to see the doctor there for to start the whole process of liver transplant. So going back to 2003, <clears throat> um, so this was before you, you had Marshall. Mm -hmm. And so really just in routine blood work. So it was no signs and just kind of thought, oh, it's going to be okay. Now, did it affect like pregnancy wise? Is that, does that um, affect that? None of my medicine or anything affected um, my pregnancy or anything. My liver functions were actually better while I was pregnant than when I wasn't. Um, I was seeing Dr. Christian here at the time and he kind of made a joke and he's like, well, you just need to stay pregnant. And I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm good with what I have and um, so anyway and then you know after I had him things you know they they went back to what they were before, you know before I got pregnant so you know actually my pregnancy was good for that but you know everything went back. I was curious about that because sometimes with hormone levels and things it can right it can make a difference with with multiple facets of our health right so, um, that's good to know that it didn't necessarily affect your pregnancy and even made it made it a little better so so we kind of just rocked on then from 2003 to, to like, yeah. you know, good, that's a little over 10 years, just yeah. looking, you know, just doing routine labs, blood work. So those viewers out there who, you know, might have heard, hey, you've got high liver function. It's not the end of the world right then. So, you, you know, right. you're a living, living proof, living testimony. Yeah. And we were, you know, doing lab work every like six months. And, you know, to have a liver disease, it, that was really good. And then just one day, it just made a turn for the worse and so but that's kind of how autoimmune diseases are that something just triggers them into you know the the worst side of it the worst so. side so um i know in uh in talking with you and of course i knew you uh from the school and from, right. from different things so but i do know that you've got quite a testimony too we're going to give you a chance to share yeah. some of that and, but I was amazed, and I've done some research on organ transplants and things for, for various reasons, but, you know, I was amazed that when I look back at some of the research, they surpassed over 30,000 organ transplants in one year in the United States. Right. And that was in 2015. So when you think about 30,000 tr organ transplants, that is, I was blown away by mm -hmm. that number. You know, number one, because when you think about organ transplants, most of the time you think about the fact that um, organs are only given when someone passes away. So you think not only of 30,000 organ transplants, you think of the fact that maybe 30, 000, that's 30,000 other families' lives who were changed. So I just was blown away by that number. And of course, we also, and I would like for you to talk a little bit about um, what we call our living transplant. A lot mm -hmm. of people may not be familiar with that now, which is phenomenal it's a you know it's, it's a wonderful thing I think um, especially for those that are needing transplants and it kind of speeds that process up some so we're going to definitely get into talking a little bit more about your journey and your story and so excited to have you here we're going to take a real quick commercial break and we'll be back after this brief commercial break At Bank of Dudley, we understand that buying a new home is a time of many decisions, and we're here to help and answer all of your questions that might arise during the mortgage loan process. Our mortgage professionals, Shirley Clements and Sherry Adderhall, have over 75 years of combined mortgage experience, backed by a bank that has served this community since 1905. Call or come by and visit with Sherry or Shirley at our Veterans Boulevard branch or go online at bankofdudley.com and get started today. Bank of Dudley, 
Creating a custom mortgage experience with competitive rates and terms is what service is all about. Bank of Dudley, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us for Dublin today. Stacy Brooks here in the studio with the Cutler family. Of course, focusing in, it is February. We want to focus in on organ donation and really encouraging our viewers. If you're not an organ donor, please make sure that, you know, you speak to your family about that. If that's something you consider, it, it literally does save lives. So we always want to encourage our viewers to at least have a conversation with your family. Don't just check that box on your driver's license renewal. Make sure that you have that conversation with your family. Now, Melissa, we're going to talk a little bit more about, as you said, um, early on, you were diagnosed with the, with the liver disease uh, over 10 years before you really started having some major problems. So walk us through maybe that, you know, whenever things started spiraling a little more. Yeah. Um really the the way we physically you could see it more so was the yellow you know in my skin and my eyes um, and really once that started it didn't get any better it just continued to get worse um, I guess about um, in the summer of 2016 was when I really was getting um, really sick stayed sick a lot um, you know I was out for the summer from school and we had plans and things to do and we didn't really get to do anything because I was so sick. Um, I think we did actually go on vacation and I was able to enjoy that for a few days but you know a couple days after that it just it continued to get worse and they were thinking that it was partly because of my gallbladder. Um, so we done some tests and those kind of things and then they decided to take my gallbladder out. And after that surgery, that was done in 2016 and in July. And so from there, the surgery and the anesthesia and everything, on top of me having a lot of liver problems already, just put me over into liver failure. And that's kind of that's, that's kind of where we started from there. From there, of course, because that surgery being um, invasive already, it's difficult with an autoimmune disorder mm -hmm. already um, a little difficult sometimes to heal some complications and that type of thing so I can't imagine when you hear that word liver failure when you first heard that word I'll ask um, Matthew what did you think mm -hmm. some of the some of the worst words you could ever hear especially when you're talking about your wife and it is an emotional mm -hmm. thing that's okay. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Happy tears now. But when you first hear it, it's not so happy. It's hard. Very, Very difficult. Very, hard. Very difficult. And, of course, because you're a mom, I can automatically think that's probably where my mind would go. Yeah. You're a mom. So um, when, you, when you're told that, because it's an unknown, it's an uncertainty, I yeah. think maybe was that kind of one of the hardest parts that for you – just the unknown, the uncertainty, I'm in liver failure, what does that mean now? Yeah, well, and they told us that, um, you know, when we were seeing the doctors at Piedmont, my MILD score, which is, which is what drives mm -hmm. where you are on the transplant list, um, I, th I think it's you have to have a 12 or, no, a 15 to be considered to be put on the transplant list. Um, and it goes from like normal meld is what seven or eight and it your meld score can go all the way up to as high as um, 40. Normally you don't get to 40 because you're yeah. you're critical at 30. Yeah. Um, normally from 30 to 35 you don't get much higher than that. Um, so when we were seeing the doctors initially before all my surgeries my meld score was still really low and they they were like you know you're sick but you're still not sick enough for transplant. And so they were like, you can make that decision. Do you want to go ahead for testing or do you just want to wait and see how this plays out? And, you know, it, it's a lot to, to process. And so we were just kind of waiting to see how everything played out. And that surgery is kind of what put us in that position to have to make that decision. And the doctors came, because um, after my surgery, I started having a lot of um, re fluid retention, um, I went back to the surgeon a couple times that done my surgery and he actually sent me upstairs to my liver specialist at Emory 
and um, he was my specialist there was like you you need to go to Piedmont like now so they made the call and the doctors came in after we had a lot of tests done that same day and you know they were like you've got to have a transplant I mean there's there was no way around that and we kind of knew that but when you know it then it's one thing but to hear it come out of somebody's mm -hmm. mouth is quite a different thing and so that's kind of that's kind of how our journey began was in the hospital. We, you know, we kind of done it backwards from everybody else and ours was very emergent, so. And of course, um, talking about that male score, and I know it's very technical, each letter stands for something, even like a Billy Rubin, like we think of babies. And of course, um, getting jaundice and that's what happens mm -hmm. because your liver, a lot of people don't realize everything has to get filtered and processed through your liver. So when it doesn't work properly, it just causes, you know, not just issues as far as liver wise and autoimmune, it affects your entire system. It affects your entire body, yeah. it does. Um, I mean, just like some, some things that just I experienced was like, you know, my nails were got really thin, they wouldn't grow. If they did grow, they were real brittle. Um, my hair, like right before I had my transplant, it was very thin. Um, you know, my best friend does hair and I picked at her. It's like, okay, girl, we're going to have to go find me a wig <laughs> if I start losing, if I lose any more hair. Cause you know, it, it was get, you know, that, and those are just some little things, but yeah. it does, it affects everything that, you know, your, your skin tone, your muscle tone, your muscle mass. I mean, you know, before transplant, I got down to 120 pounds and, you know, I was always a bigger girl and, you know, uh, that for me that was I mean that was that you could tell I was sick yeah. you know and for people who maybe haven't been around people who have issues with their with their mm -hmm. liver you literally you, you can tell a difference in your skin color I know mm -hmm. that you touch base on that but um and Matthew coming from your background I'm sure that you probably knew more what it meant than she did I could I would assume you know you kind of <laughs> yes, you know you kind of know those things so you have that inside information sometimes that makes it even more difficult on family members but we're going to talk about when we come back um, in just a moment we're going to talk about that actual transplant and how things have been since then and really encourage our viewers on how important that um, organ donation really is we'll be right back Hi, I'm Jeff Cannon, President of Citizens Bank of Lawrence County. If you're presently a customer of ours, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for allowing us to be your bank. We appreciate the confidence you have placed in us and enjoy providing you with the most up-to-date banking products and services to satisfy your needs. If you're not a current customer, we would like to invite you to stop by and let us show you true community banking at its best. We concentrate on our local community, doing our part to make Dublin and Lawrence County a better place to live, work, play, and retire. We recently introduced two new products, eStatements and Access Now, our mobile banking app. Both of these products will help to make banking with us more convenient and will also help to provide you with a safer and more secure banking experience. So for all your banking needs, just give us a call or stop by and let us show you personal banking at its best. Citizens Bank of Lawrence County, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. I'm Marcus Clements with Clements & King Insurance. Darren and I have 75 years of combined experience serving this community. Our agency is dedicated totally to the sale of life and health insurance for Lawrence and surrounding counties. Call us for any question you have on life and health insurance. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us for Dublin today. Stacy Brooks here with the Cutler family. And of course, um, Melissa was just walking us through the nightmare, literally. They walk in, they tell you you're in liver failure, you're gonna have to have transplant. And um, real briefly, we will touch on the, what they call a uh, living donor. And I know your brother, it really got your brother in shape. Tell yeah. us real quickly a little bit about that. Yeah, well, when we were, um, we were in the hospital in August um, of 2016, and um, they told us that I wouldn't leave without a transplant. And well, we all know that that's not how that happened. Um, and so we rocked on for you know a long time dealing with mild score. It would go up and it would come down, and it, that's the frustrating part of that. If you've had someone on a transplant list, the 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 waiting and the fluctuating is is the tough part. It's the roller um, coaster from the devil. <laughs> <laughs> because that determines where you're at on the list. Right, mm -hmm. so it does. You go in, you know, one day if your mild score is here, and they're like, oh, you're moved up. 
but then the next week it's down, oh, well, you're moved down. Right, and and that's the constant roller coaster. We were on pretty much <clears throat> from um, November until March because I would be a 29, which would put me up at the top, and then I would drop, you know, to a 25, or we dropped as low as 21 before. So it was just kind of all over the place, and your, your different levels do drive that MELD score. So, um, so we went back to the doctor in January, and there was a doctor from Detroit that came to Piedmont and started the living donor thing, because until he came, they didn't have that capabilities because they didn't have the surgeon. Um, I think Mayo in Jacksonville was the closest one. Um, but he came and, you know, they were telling us about all that. And um, there are so many hoops, even with that, you have to jump through. You know, they have, the person has to be about the same height. You have to be compatible. Um, just a whole host of things. But it's, um, we were amazed just to hear the possibilities of them taking well over half of my brother's liver and putting it in mine and his growing back to full what it's supposed to be and the half they put in me do the same. And so he started his process. We had like a family meeting and we talked to them. And of course, you know, my brothers, they, you know, they were fabulous. And we followed your journey and uh, seeing him sweating it out. Oh yeah. Because there were, there were conditions. He had to lose weight, he had to be in shape. And um, so, uh, it got him healthy, I think. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Even though you didn't eat his liver. <laughs> no. It was a positive. It was a positive yeah. for him and, too. Yeah, and um, Stephen, Stephen was the one that was doing it, but Matthew was doing it also, my, um, my other brother. And um, so we found out that Stephen was a definite match, and so Stephen kind of got the jump start. Um, he and I have the same mom, same dad, so we pretty much knew that he was, you know, going to be compatible. And... Um, so he started his journey and my brother Matthew was like, hey, I've been doing better. I'm going, you know, so he went for his testing and our blood types didn't match. So, you know, he was, he picked at Stephen. He was like, oh yeah, I can go eat fat kid food now, you know, <laughs> and, and Stephen can't. So he's, he's trying to save his sister. You know, it was kind of, yeah. we kind of made it a joke, but you know, Stephen was very serious and very dedicated. He was, I, I can attest to that, not for, but just from, from watching, of course, Social media, yeah. um, anytime someone has something, it's a great asset to keep it our is. friends and family informed. And, of course, um, just the fact that he was willing to do to do that has to mean a lot. And yeah, um, But then you got the call. I understand because you had Life Flight on standby. The people there were great if you needed that yeah. service. So when you got the call that, hey, we have a liver for you, yeah. kind of tell us how quickly things moved. Um, very fast. Um we had, we had went out of town that weekend. Um, we had a good trip. We went to North Georgia just to kind of get away because we needed that break. Um, we came back. Um, we had a school break. And then the next day I had to go to Atlanta. And that day we actually found out that my male score was back up to a 29 again. And um, even the doctor that came in to see us, um, my regular doctor was on vacation. She was out of the country even. Oh, wow. And so... He, the doctor that saw us came in, he's like, you know, you're 29, that puts you really high. He said, you're probably number two, three here. We don't know what Emory's list looks like, but you know, you may or may not get a call. We don't want to get your hopes up. I mean, and they're very, they're very straightforward with you because I mean, they know that you're, you, you know, you're, you're trying to keep tabs on this. And so, um, you know, we, at this point, it wasn't funny, but it was funny. Like we laughed it off because we had been here many times before in that same situation. And um, so we had spent a whole day in Atlanta, tests, doctors, and it, by that point, it wore me out. And um, I got up to go to work that day um, on the 15th and I just couldn't. I was sick, I was dizzy, um, you know, and Anybody that's ever worked with me knows I, I go to work. Even if I don't feel good, even if I'm sick, I go to work. And so that afternoon, um, I was waiting on Matthew and the kids to get home just like I always do. You know, I had started feeling better. I was planning on going to work the next day. And um, our phone rang. And 
is the call you waited for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what they said, you know. It'll happen when you least expect it. And it did. Um, it was about, well, it was 4.32. Um, I was, you know, doing what I normally do. Um, watching um, a cooking show. <laughs> they pick at me all the time. Um, about my cooking shows that I watch, you know, I was watching the cooking show, got up to get me something to drink, um, and that's when the phone rang, and, you know, I knew it was a, a an Atlanta number, and I had just been to the doctor, and they're really good about if you're not feeling well, they call the next day and check on you or whatever, and so um, the lady was like, hey, this is Beverly from LifeLink, um, we have a liver for you, and man, <laughs> It's um, it's a lot to process. Process because you knew what that meant. They have a they have a liver. This is it. This is what yeah. we've been waiting. This waiting is for. the call so we've been this waiting. This is the call we've been waiting for. Yeah. We're gonna take a quick break, and as soon as we mm -hmm. come back, we're gonna find out just how quickly that went, and find out just how great things are going. Yep. We'll be right back. Are you ready to book your next party, class reunion, or family reunion, baby shower, or birthday party? Then look no further than the tranquility and natural beauty of Renez Dye Banquets and Events. We're out here today on this beautiful nine acre wooded property full of live oaks and Georgia pines. There's no other place like it anywhere. Renez Dye. Our venue includes a beautiful 6,800 square foot pavilion that can accommodate up to 450 guests but can be transformed into a beautiful, elegant design that makes this venue like no other. We're conveniently located just one mile off Interstate 16 on Highway 19 and surrounded by the beautiful Lawrence County countryside. Let our team take care of every detail of your next event. At Renez Dye, we'll design, manage, and execute your social events and celebrations that reflect your personality and leave lasting memories for you and your guests long after the event is over. Call us today at 278 1295 or 278-1217 Renez Dye Banquets and Events 1827 Highway 19 South just one mile south of Interstate 16 in Dublin. Hello, I'm Darren King with Clements and Keene Insurance. If you're like myself, you may be a self-employed individual with maybe one or two employees on your payroll. You may have thought in the past that you couldn't acquire group health insurance, but now you can. Some of the rules and regulations have changed to make it more favorable for you to do so for 2018. Give us a call at 272-8019 and let us help you with the decisions that you need to make for you and your business. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us for Dublin today uh, here in the studio with the Cutler family. And as Melissa was just telling us, very emotional um, even during the break. And uh, your son Marshall saying, I remember that day, we just cried and cried and cried because it was the call you were waiting for. Yep. Because even though I'm sure it had to be scary, you knew this is what we need. This is what I need. Right. So um, then you have people like me on Facebook, who, you know, <laughs> pray for the Cutler. She's going into surgery. Um, she's in surgery now. Okay, it's been this many hours. We're still <laughs> here. You know, getting up early the next morning going, okay, well, she's doing good. She's doing that, you know. So... It, it was a journey for everybody. Of course, it a journey was. different for your family. But um, you had a great support system, I think. Yes, very. Uh, we so had wonderful. Tell us about that. Going in, you, you get the call, and you get to Atlanta as quickly as possible, I'm sure. Yes, yes, we did. Um, like I said, they called at 4.30, you know, in the afternoon. And, you know, if you've ever been to Atlanta, Georgia, you know that is not the time <laughs> for them to say, I need you here now. <laughs> Um, you know, we are air evac memberships. We, well, we have an air evac membership. And so, you know, when we got it, that was kind of our thought in the back of our head. Well, if we ever need it, you know, it's great to have. Um, because we really you, got it because of my, my friends at EMS. They know that I don't like to fly. I like my feet on the ground. <laughs> and uh, once they came to town, they... Uh, they the guys were joking with me and they said, if anything ever happens to you, we're putting you on the helicopter. <laughs> so I told Melissa, I said, well, Miss Cindy's been coming around at the uh, at the open enrollment. So I said, I'm, I'm going to get this thing because them guys are going to put me in there and I want it to be paid for. <laughs> <laughs> you probably want to have it 
have that nailed down. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So you get so, there and, and things are yeah. really, really fast. Yeah, then. they they called and, you know, they were like, we need you here by 7 and it's 4.30. Oh, wow. I was like, you know, we're two and a half hours away on a good day with no traffic. And, you know, this is a Thursday afternoon at 4.30 and there's just no way. I said, you know, I'll, I'll be flying in. And she's like, oh, wow, okay. I said, <laughs> we've been, re you know, everybody in our community knows what's going on. Aerivac knows that, you know, and if it's where they can fly, you know, they're, they're already on alert. So it, it's good to, you know, know those kind of people and have those kind of connections. And, you know, a lot of that is because of the work Matthew does. Um, they're, they're a huge extended family. Um, so we got there. Um, got to the base and we made it to the airport before, se well, uh, like with a few minutes to spare before seven. Um, they came, got me from the helipad and I never have been through Piedmont Hospital so fast in all my life. Those ladies put me on this big, huge stretcher thing and we rolled. And that was it. And that was, you know, the beginning of that. Um, they, you know, they got everything ready. And they started my surgery on the 16th, about a little bit after one. I think it was 1.30 when they started. And um, they got finished, I don't know, 6.30, mm. 7 o'clock. It was the so. longest night ever. Longest night. And I can remember, um, I'm a night owl anyway, a lot of people know that. So um, I can remember being up and I can remember your dear friend who was there. Yes. <laughs> who was there and she would post up, you know, post updates. And so everybody's kind of looking to see, okay, she went in at this time. How much longer? You know, yeah. That kind of thing. So I know it had to be a long night for you guys. But coming out of it and when you're waking up, you did extraordinarily well. Some would I, say a miracle. Yeah. Well, and even the doctors were amazed. I, I mean, but we had so many people praying for us. So many. Um, and it made a difference. You know, um, I was awake. And I remember waking up and having the vent tube in. Um, there's many stories behind that. <laughs> <laughs> Too many to go into on camera. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my brother said I tried to hit the nurse that was by my bed. That's just one she of did. them I'll share. That's true. Yes. <laughs> I was ready to get that. You know, when you're mm -hmm. awake and you wake yeah. up with the tube in your throat, it's kind of yeah. um, mm -hmm. let me. Out. Yeah. Get, it's a reflex. Get, that yeah. doesn't count. That doesn't yeah. count. She, yeah. she kept squeezing my hand. Yes. She looked dead in my eyes and she couldn't say a word, but I knew what she was saying. <laughs> She's like, I'm thinking, you could take it out. Yeah. You know how to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, mm -hmm. there, you know, we got through with that, and, you know, that same day, a little bit after lunch, um, I was sitting up in a chair, talking, um, you know, things progressed really fast. Um, that next morning, they had planned on sending me up to the transplant floor, but they didn't have a bed, so I had to stay in ICU, so I ended up staying there, you know, fairly quick, and um, we I done excellent. Now the doctors were just totally amazed, um, floored. <laughs> um, they were talking about sending me home Tuesday morning and Monday night I started running a fever. And so that kind of set us back a little bit, but um, I still was in the hospital for only six days wow. after transplant. And home being the Atlanta area. <laughs> yeah. You have to stay closer. Yes. Of course they monitor you, do blood, you know, blood you know, blood counts and, you know, yeah. tons of labs, I know. And, yeah. and, of course, there's medication you're on, anti-rejection medication. They have to make right. sure those are right. And um, But you did amazing. And so how far out now are we post-transplant? Um, we are 11 months. 11 months. So almost you're almost at your one-year anniversary. Yes, the 16th of March. Of March. So yeah. that will always be a special day. Oh, yeah. Your alive day. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I can't imagine emotionally what it was like, but I have to, to think, you know, Matthew, you just kind of breathe this <laughs> relief, <laughs> sigh of relief that it's yeah. over. And, um, yeah. and of course, now, of course, you still have to have your levels monitored and that I kind do. of thing, but no problems and, so far. As far um, as, you we've know. had, you know, they've had to adjust medicine, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the bumps in the road that you expect. Um, I was never exposed to a CMV virus as a child, but my donor was. So in October, I was actually in the hospital for several days um, with the CMV virus. They put you in there because 
um, you know, when it's been less than a year after transplant, that can kind of be critical um, because you're still on all that anti-rejection medicine, um, um, immunosuppressant medicine. So, you know, we they take a lot of precaution that, you know, some people might think is a little bit overkill, but to them, yeah. it's, it's protocol. You, can't you be know, too careful. you can't. Mm -hmm. And so we, we've had to kind of watch where we go and watch what we do and who we're around, especially, you know, with like this time of the year with the flu yeah. season. And, you know, praise God, we have kept the flu out of our house. <laughs> we've been doing lots of praying, a lot of hand washing, hand sanitizing, and, you know, so, yeah. but, um, Sometimes people don't realize that. They think, you know, we moms mm -hmm. or teachers are just being critical, but you never know who you're around at school. Right. Your children could be exposed to it, therefore bringing it home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes it's not just us being overprotective. There really is, you know, there's, there's yeah. more reasons. So, but you look great, and I can tell your family is so relieved, and it's Mary's senior year. So things are going awesome for you guys. Um, if you had maybe one thing to tell our viewers, um, what would you tell them about how important organ donation really is? Um, it is really important um, because, you know, unfortunately, when someone that you love does pass away unexpected, and um, I know it's a hard decision to have to make. Um, and, you know, even before all this happened with us, we all, you know, were organ donors anyway because we know how important it is, you know, um, I would hate to know I left here and could have made a difference in somebody else's life. Right. And, and it really does make a huge difference. Yeah. Um, we, we've had opportunities to share our stories at different places, um, places we would go to in Atlanta before we came actually home. Um, you know, God kind of opened the doors there. We've been to like four different churches. Um, you know, some of our very good friends kind of put us on the, on the, on the spot the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're really good friends with Kevin Tanner. You know, he's the pastor at Rock Springs and, um, he went to our church before he started pastoring there. And, um, we were just talking one day and Kevin's like, you know, he said, I really think you need to come to church and share your story. And, you know, just, you know, and I'm like, I don't think I'm ready for that right now, Tanner. I, I just really don't. <laughs> And um, sometimes God has other plans. Yeah, and um, I said, but you know, when I get ready, I'll let you know. And um, so we were coming home from vacation, and um, I sent him a text, and I was like, "Okay, I'm. I think I'm ready. Just give me a date, and I'll be ready." And he was like, "Woohoo!" Yeah. You know. And so that was our first official time sharing that. And um, there's there's so many things to share that you know you just can't share in 30 minutes, you know, um, but, you know, it, it makes a huge difference in people's lives and, you know, it really does give people a, a second chance when, you know, they really need it. So, uh, in closing, first of all, I'm so glad you're doing great. Appreciate you taking the time out to come, you and your, and your family. I know it's difficult every time you have to speak about it, but I also know that, um, your faith played a huge role, uh, you know, in your recovery as well. And I just want to encourage our viewers, if you are not already listed as an organ donor, please make sure you have that, that conversation with your family. As you can see, this is a family's life. Uh, you know, this was her life. You have a second right. chance at life. Your children have their mom. We can't stress enough. Of course, it is the month of February. We want to really encourage that. But we want to stress to you that you never know. I attended Oconee Fall Line Technical College, and like many others, I was considered a non-traditional student. My classes at OFTC have taught me the different aspects of a criminal mind and the way the criminal act. The term non-traditional career refers to jobs that have traditionally been held by one gender. That would be like males in cosmetology or females in welding. Anyone can do it, regardless of the gender. And as long as you put your mind to it, you can succeed and achieve all your goals. I've worked in kitchens, uh, bars, and I saw a lot of bad decisions uh, and good decisions and decided that I, I was ready to do it. And um, I, wanted, I wanted to go out on my own and see if, if I could you know, open a successful restaurant.